AI agents just got really good at social deduction games that require interrogation and multi-agent communication to figure out who the bad guy is. These are games like Mafia and the very popular Among Us. Stanford researchers have discovered how to greatly improve AI's ability to interrogate and deduce information about their world just by communicating with other agents. And these tactics don't just work for agents, they would work for humans as well. So here's the paper, Training Language Models for Social Deduction with Multi-Agent Reinforcement Learning, and this is out of Stanford University. And they figured out how to give agents a dense reward signal in this type of situation. And if dense reward signal sounds familiar, you probably already know we're going to be talking about reinforcement learning once again today. And RL is clearly all you need. All right, so we're gonna be focusing on the game Among Us, and let me tell you how that game works. This is called a hidden role game. So this is a multiplayer game, and players are split into two groups, the uninformed majority and the informed minority. And specifically in Among Us, there are crewmates and imposters. The goal of the crewmates is to figure out the identity of the imposters, and the goal of the imposters is to last as long as they can in the game without revealing their identity. So in the game, the crewmates have to complete tasks. Tasks can be things like solving puzzles or turning on and off switches. On the flip side, the imposters, the only thing they're tasked to do is kill the crewmates. Now, once a player reports a corpse, so sees somebody who's dead in the game, there's this free chat phase of the game where all the different players, both crewmates and imposters, get together and discuss what they saw. Now, obviously, the imposters are there and they would be lying. They could accuse other people. They can say, no, that wasn't me. And their goal is to divert suspicion away from them. Now, during this free chat phase, the crewmates are basically sharing information, gathering information, and trying to figure out who the imposter might be. So if one of the crewmates sees the murder happen, they can say, hey, I just saw player B kill player C. Now, obviously that person could be an imposter, so you really have to figure out whether what somebody is saying is true or false. Then at the end of the discussion phase, there's a vote and everybody votes and tries to vote out the imposter. The crewmates win if they vote out the imposter, the imposter wins if they last long enough to be the last one standing. And so multi-agent coordination is not new. Traditionally, having a multi-agent environment where they can cooperate and compete effectively is called multi-agent reinforcement learning, M-A-R-L. So competitive games like StarCraft, Overcooked, and Hanabi are really good examples where this type of technique comes into play. But here's the problem. This technique takes a huge amount of task-specific human communication data. Basically, they need to see what the experts have done. And that's the only way that these agents are able to perform on par with humans. But what happens if you don't have that data? Well, those techniques don't work. And so the point of this paper is to find a reward signal that doesn't require vast amounts of human data to train these models using reinforcement learning. And so we've been talking a lot about reinforcement learning on this channel lately. Reinforcement learning with verifiable rewards is the key to enabling artificial intelligence to reach new levels. But in this instance, in the game Among Us, how do you tell whether an agent's communication or even their interpretation of other agents' communication is good or bad? How are they supposed to know whether the messages they're sending to other agents are useful to those agents or the messages that they're hearing from other agents are useful to them? And if the only reward signal they're getting is whether they win or lose the game at the end of the game, that is not a rich enough signal to use reinforcement learning. So here's the key proposal of this paper. It proposes an approach that rewards a message generated during the discussion phase based on how it may have changed the other crewmates' perception of who the imposter is based on the ground truth. But they not only need to have a reward signal for how good their messages to the other crewmates are, they also need a reward signal for how well they interpret messages from other crewmates. So speaking and listening. 
it turns out this technique works really well, rewarding messages sent to other crewmates that cause those other crewmates to believe the imposter is the actual imposter of the game. And conversely, rewarding interpretations of other messages that cause that crewmate to believe the imposter is the actual imposter. And so what they learn to do is not only accuse other crewmates of being the potential imposter, but actually provide proof and evidence to back up their claims. And remember, with this method, this can be done without any human examples. And that is the power of reinforcement learning. And then you get into a situation where you can use self-play. Basically, the agents play the game over and over again to figure out what series of words worked best to convince the other players accurately who the imposter is. Thank you to the sponsor of this segment, Vitcher. These are the Vitcher Pro XR glasses, and it's basically like having a huge screen powered by really any device that you already have. And it's way easier to use than even I expected. You simply put them on, you plug it into any device, here's my iPhone, and within seconds, I have a giant screen of my iPhone right in front of my face. I was actually really blown away by the quality of these. The unboxing experience was phenomenal. The case that it comes with is super high quality. The glasses themselves, the build quality is excellent. When I first got them, I expected to have to install things, turn them on, set things up, maybe authenticate. I didn't have to do any of that. I literally just put them on, plug it into a device, and it just worked. You don't even need to power it separately. The device that you're plugging into will power these glasses for you. There's no operating system, no installation. Just put them on, plug them in, and you're good to go. And so these are the Pro XR glasses. They offer a 135 inch, 120 hertz, full HD, ultra clarity, virtual display for gaming, for streaming, for anything. And now they offer a really cool AI 2D to 3D transformation of the thing you're looking at. So experience the next big thing in AI and VR, the Vitcher Pro XR glasses. Thank you to Vitcher for sponsoring this segment and definitely check these out. I'll drop all the links in the description below now. Back to the video. So let me read a few things from this paper. Agents do not have a strong signal for understanding the helpfulness of the messages they send or for learning the meaning of messages from other players. So that is the speaking and listening that I just talked about. The sparse reward signal the agents receive when winning the game is not informative enough to reinforce high quality discussions between agents. We propose an approach that rewards a message generated during the discussion phase based on how the other crewmates beliefs on the identity of the imposter changes. So that reward signal again is based on the ground truth, the game, the model, the engine, they know who the actual imposter is. And so if more agents based on a message start to believe the imposter is the actual imposter, that is a very strong signal that those messages were very effective. Now, here's something really interesting. We find that our technique results in emergent behavior commonly found in real games of Among Us between humans, such as directly accusing players and providing evidence to help other crewmates. This method results in two times higher success rates relative to standard RL, along with over three times higher success rate relative to base models that are over four times larger than our models. Now in this related work section, they talk about a type of situation called reference games and repeated reference games. So imagine you have a handful of images and a speaker needs to be able to communicate to the listeners so that the listeners can pick the right single image out of those five, but they can't just say, choose image three, choose image four. They need to actually describe how to choose the image based on what the image is. So that is a reference game. Now, humans tend to quickly adapt to such tasks, naturally using theory of mind reasoning to determine the intent of the speakers. So let me just read what ChatGPT says theory of mind is. So theory of mind is the ability to understand that others have thoughts, beliefs, intentions, and knowledge that may be different from one's own. It allows individuals to predict and interpret other people's actions based on their mental states. Now, these social deduction games are actually more complicated than the reference games because nobody actually knows the ground truth. Teams must communicate to collectively come to the answer. And of course, 
you have the imposter also trying to poison the conversation. Now here's what makes it even more difficult, just using a win or a loss at the end of the game as a reward signal. Listen to this. Very little signal for the effectiveness of its messages during discussions, which makes utilizing communication very difficult with just RL in practice. This sparse signal makes identifying the imposter difficult in the multi-agent setting because voting correctly may still result in a loss and voting incorrectly could result in a win if a plurality of agents vote for the imposter. So what does that actually mean? It means even if you vote incorrectly as an agent, you might still win the game. And if you vote correctly, you might still lose the game. So that very sparse signal at the end of the game becomes even worse. To improve beyond the RL baseline, we can take advantage of the social deduction component of the game. Each agent's belief in choosing the correct answer will provide a stronger signal for learning the core components of the game and the means of communication relative to the RL baseline. Again, they know the ground truth, so if they're able to convince other agents during the actual game to start believing the imposter is the actual imposter, that's a very strong signal that they're using. However, that's really good when the agent is communicating messages to the other agents, but what if our agent is listening to the messages of other agents? How do they know whether that message that they're listening to and interpreting is actually good or bad. Well, they basically just flip it. If the messages they're listening to from the other agents cause our agent, let's just say our base agent, to believe that the imposter is the actual imposter, that's a very good rich reward signal for reinforcement learning as a listener. So what they've done, we directly train crewmates to improve their reasoning over imposters using the environment's ground truth answer for the identity of the imposter. And here's the important part. This training signal does not specifically require human demonstration data. So they figured out a way to give that rich reward signal without the human data. And that's really important. So I've talked a lot about how STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math all have easily identifiable reward signals. Two plus two equals four. So if a model says two plus two equals four, you know that's correct. It has a verifiable reward. Now, that's actually frequently not the case. If you ask a model to write a story, there's no real right answer to that. Thus, there's no way to give a reward signal and no way to use reinforcement learning without human intervention. But in this, and what I'm hoping we're gonna find in a lot more areas, is we can actually identify reward signals even if they're not obvious. And in this case, once again, they were able to do that in the Among Us game. And I already talked about self-play, so listen to this. We employ an iterated self-play algorithm where crewmates and imposters train against earlier iterations of their adversaries' policy. Very similar to how AlphaGo got really good at Go, very similar to how chess engines get really good at chess, reinforcement learning is all you need. This is the same exact method that DeepSeek used to get really good at eliciting that thinking behavior. This is the same technique that the Berkeley PhD student used to elicit the thinking behavior from a 1.5 billion parameter model for just $30. I am telling you, reinforcement learning is the path to taking AI to the next level. All right, so let's look at some of the results. How did it actually perform? All right, so we have a bunch of different permutations of the game, of the environment's shape, the number of tasks, and the number of players. And that's what we see here. On the left, we have the environment shape. So two by one, one by three, two by two, et cetera. Then we have the number of tasks, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have the number of players, four, five, and six. Now, above the top is the key for what these different colors mean, and they are the different base model or training techniques that they used. Now on the y-axis, we have the win rate. So here it is, and we can see in the darkest gray, the win rate being the lowest is the base model with basically nothing done. And across the board, as you can see, the base model performed the worst. So these techniques really did work because we're only getting better from here. Now in the slightly lighter gray, we have a bigger version of this base model, a seven billion parameter version, as you can see right here. Now in this even lighter gray, we have RL. So this is reinforcement learning, but this is reinforcement learning without those additional signals that we talked about. Then in this light yellow, we have a model that is listening only, and it's trained to optimize its listening ability, but not using reinforcement learning. 
Then we have reinforcement learning with listening, and then finally, reinforcement learning with listening and speaking. Now, as you can see, with those reinforcement learning rewards, we get much, much better success rate. So just training with RL significantly boosts the performance relative to the base models. We still find RL without additional listening loss struggles to reason about the identity of the imposters. When we instead only trained with listening, it does not know which actions are effective or how to discuss details about the environment, but it is an effective baseline due to the fact that predicting the identity of the imposter is valuable in Among Us. Now, when combining RL and listening, the success rate increases dramatically. And then finally, the full model achieves twice the win rate of the RL only baseline in the base environment. And in this graph, figure five, what we can see is the self play iteration improves the win rate. So the fact that they are doing this self play really helps. Now, in summary, despite having weak base models, meaning small models, not even large models, our agents learn to speak effectively and extract information from discussion messages. We also find that our agents are robust to adversarially trained imposters who, despite attempting to sabotage the discussion, are unable to break the crewmates coordination during discussions. This is so cool. Now, let me talk about a few takeaways that I gather from this. Number one, AI agents are now all of a sudden going to be really good at interrogation and spotting lies. That has a ton of implications in itself. Not only that, coordination among agents make them even more powerful. But I think what I'm most excited about is they took something where the reward signal wasn't very obvious, at least to me, and they made it obvious. And they use reinforcement learning and self-play with no human in the loop to make these agents perform much better at conversational games. Now they were able to identify a rich reward signal. And I think the key to a lot of different areas, professions, tasks, is going to be being able to identify the rich reward signal to train the model on. Because if you can identify that, you can use a very small model, not a ton of reinforcement learning, not a ton of self-play, and still get incredible results. Again, the same thing that we saw from the Berkeley paper that was able to elicit that thinking behavior on a very narrow task for just $30. What do you think about this? What other areas do you think this type of system can be applied to? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.